Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, Parlor, and Instagram. And of course, be sure to visit www.mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. I'm Wood. I work in treatment. This could be a fresh start for us. Then go. Don't worry, you're not in trouble. It's not easy to ask for help. That's why it is the greatest privilege in my life to help you change yours. We are a family. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Since 2008, every healthcare provider needs to cover substance abuse treatment. This is what we in the treatment industry call a gold rush. So how much are they paying you? Huh? Tina! Bonafide first timer, he's not making a dollar. Hey man, how can I get in? Utah, welcome to the team. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 328. Releasing February 19 in theaters on digital and on demand across the US is Body Brokers, an engaging crime thriller in which a recovering drug addict named Utah, played by Jack Kilmer, realizes his rehab center is a billion dollar fraud program that enlists addicts to recruit other addicts. Highlighting a very real issue taking place across the US, Body Brokers blends genre thrills with real life stakes to make for an engaging and illuminating watch. And joining me now on the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is the writer and director of Body Brokers, John Swab. John, I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you taking the time. So, you know, this story, this movie is just, it's fascinating and and disturbing and and very unique as well. And it's a subject that I feel not many storytellers, filmmakers are really approaching at all. Um, what was it about this this fraud, this scam that's been placed upon the American people that, and so many vulnerable people are that that really inspired you to want to write uh, and direct this movie? Uh, well, it happened to me, and uh, and I also, you know, I I played in my real life uh, the role of Utah and of Wood. Um, I was brokered and I brokered people. And, uh, you know, I was a drug addict for a long time, um, since recovered and recovering. And, uh, I felt like this is an important story that needed to be told. I've seen a lot of movies come out recently. I've seen a lot of, you know, every year there seems to be that two films that come out, you know, with the subject being drug addiction. And I felt like none of them were telling the most important angle of this story, which is, you know, the recovery side and, uh, and how corrupt the proposed solution is to, addiction so i felt like it needed to be told you have a great cast in your film um who i really want to focus on though is jack kilmer and everyone uh for people who don't know jack kilmer is of is the son of the great val kilmer and he really brings the right about of uh fragility and i um, naivety to the character um i've seen him work before in lords of chaos it was terrific in that it's terrific in your film as well um, were you aware of his work beforehand and what was it like casting and working with Jack in, on your movie? Yeah, I was aware of Jack's work, um, Palo Alto and, and Lords of Chaos. And, uh, I'm, you know, I, he's got, like you said, he's got a real innocence and, uh, and, and a really gentle presence on screen, which I felt like for the role of Utah was, was necessary kind of in this world of sharks like circling these addicts, I, I think for the audience to watch and, and kind of understand and experience it through somebody who is naive and who is innocent um, was key in order to get the point across and understand really what was happening to these people. Um, so working with Jack was great. He's a he's a really great kid and a talented actor, and uh, you know was was passionate about telling the story the right way. The character of Wood as well, played by Michael Kenneth Williams, is so incredibly uh, intriguing. Um, one thing that really popped out with him, uh, among many things, is 
co the costume design for him. Um, he's almost, almost presents himself as this kind of urban cowboy in a sort of way. Um, is that kind of like something, a decision that is in the script? Is that something that Michael brings to the role? How does that kind of come about? Uh, it was a, it was kind of a triangulated decision between myself, the costume designer and, um, and Michael, where we really wanted wood to be, you know, an enigma hmm. and something that stood out in this world and something that was alluring and, and felt, you know, iconic in a way, um, as kind of the, the seductor and the salesman. And, uh, you know, it, I hadn't seen that Michael do that look. Uh, Michael is such a likable guy and he's got such charisma and is a fantastic actor. And he's also extremely iconic for the roles he's already portrayed. Yeah. So the way we felt best to kind of, you know, break him of what you expect from him is to put him in something you've never seen, which was this, this cowboy, kind of Western look. Um, and he loved it and uh, he had a lot of fun with it. And I'm, you know, I'm so grateful and proud of, of the work Michael did in this film. You mentioned before the very real autobiographical kind of nature um, of your own story. Um, that's that you can really feel in some of these characters here. How much of Wood and how much of, of uh, Jack Kilmer's character of Utah uh, represents you in the story, in the what you went through in your own experiences in these kind of programs? Uh, I think, you know, the, the script took me about four days to write. And I wrote the last 67 pages in one afternoon. Mm. And I only say that because that's how, you know, well I know this this world and how, you know, how much and, and, and familiar I was with these characters and who they are and who they are you know, in relation to who I am. Um, so I'd say everybody and, you know, kind of everybody in the movie is, is a piece of me as well as a piece of a few people that I met in my journey to, to getting sober and, and finding recovery. Um, so I, I, it's hard for me when I, when I was writing the movie, I don't think there's one bad guy. I just think the system's broken. Yeah. So um, it was, it was kind of a, an interesting story where there, there is no real villain. Um, they're all just operating in this, you know, this flawed system and, and trying to do the best they can. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people have lost their way, but, uh, in terms of Jack and Michael equal parts, um, you know, I'm certainly not as, as cool as Michael is, uh, in real life. Um, and I'm certainly not as naive as Utah is. Uh, so somewhere in the middle, I guess. It's a, your film really presents the, not only is it a great drama, but it talks about the real life facts behind what's going on here. Uh, you do it in very clever ways. You do it through narration and little segues into, into segments that kind of presents what's going on with the situation. Um, doing things like that can be really tricky, kind of giving people all these doses of information while you are presenting a dramatic work. Um, how tricky was it kind of to find that right balance between presenting the facts behind this story and also kind of like the drama of the story as well? Yeah, it, it's a tough balance. And, um, you know, I really look up to the filmmakers who have done it the best. Uh, you know, it, I guess kind of the premier uh, person would be somebody like Adam McKay with Vice or uh, or um, The Big Short. And, and you know, I'm, I'm obviously operating on, you know, a hundredth of the budget that, that they had for those films. So, you know, trying to do it with grace and, uh, and elegance is, is tough on an indie budget, but I felt like, you know, the balance between the narrative and all of this information, it, I didn't feel like you could do it without both. Um, because I wanted people when they watch it to realize like, Oh, this, this isn't just happening to one person. It's happening to nearly everybody who goes to rehab and who's asking for help. They're all in some way being exploited. And, um, you know, so it was it was tricky to find that balance, and you know, we did I think a pretty good job uh, trying to integrate it seamlessly and and not you know detract from the narrative um, while also presenting all the facts. And I agree with that as well. I think the way that you did present it and bled it all together was uh, really terrific. Um, Melissa Leo is in this movie, um, amongst many many others, great names. Um, I read that she has become something of, of a mentor to you over the years. How did that relationship come about? 
Yeah, I live upstate. I live in upstate New York. Um, she was introduced to me um, via a mutual friend, and uh, you know, I I gave her a script for for a film I did uh, called Run with the Hunted mm -hmm. that she kind of helped. She challenged me a lot in the writing process, and I learned a lot. And I, I don't think she expected me to be as uh, persistent with her as I was. And through that process, she ended up coming on to Body Brokers, and then I just finished a film um, called Ida Red with her. But, um, you know, I just – I'm kind of uh, always trying to be a student, and wherever I can learn and I find a teacher, I really try and – get as much as I can from that person. And Melissa in my filmmaking journey is, has definitely, I've gleaned the most from her um, on how to direct, on how to, you know, operate on a set, on how to, you know, approach writing characters and, and scenes and structure and all these things. She's really been very, you know, gracious in her time um, with me and, and given me a lot. And she's become a dear friend to my producer, Jeremy Rosen and I um, in a way that I, you know, I would have never expected. So I'm very grateful for her. Um, yeah. Body Brokers is actually filmed in uh, Tulsa. In fact, all of your films are filmed in Tulsa. That's your hometown. Is that right? Yeah, it's where I'm from. And um, we have filmed, Body Brokers was filmed about, about 75% of it was filmed here. And then we filmed in LA as well. But uh, yeah, I, I'm from here and you know, indie film, you've got to use every resource at your disposal. And I've been able to do a lot with very little because of, you know, doing things where I'm from and, uh, and tailoring things to, to this city and, and understanding how to utilize it. And the people here have been great and very supportive. And, uh, you know, I'm actually my, my, like my producer and then partner and all these Jeremy Rosen and I are, uh, in Tulsa now, um, starting prep on another one. So, in uh, filming now during uh, this time of uh, COVID, um, has places like Tulsa and other places outside of traditional location shoots, like say in Los Angeles and New York, have they become much more attractive now to investors and filmmakers to film outside of those areas in places where you are now? Absolutely. Um, Jeremy and I have done two films here since COVID, and you know, the benefit with these towns is, is I mean, obviously the, uh, the restrictions are a little bit lighter. The populations are obviously much smaller than, than the major metropolises like NYC or L.A. So you can kind of move around um, with the nucleus of a film crew and, and kind of be your own country in these smaller places where you don't have to worry about coming into contact with, um, you know, people that you aren't working with. Um, you can keep a tight knit group and, and stay safe uh, a lot easier than you can in, in bigger cities. So I, I, have definitely seen a big boom here and, uh, and heard of it, you know, being the same in other places, uh, that you hadn't normally thought of as filming locations. You know, the, the end of your film really hits us with some hard facts some sobering facts in regards to drug use in America. One of them was, uh, 15 people died, at the end of me watching your film and that kind of really, really hit home about the, the real life stakes behind all of this. And, um, I don't, you know, I, I imagine for you that this movie, not only is it an expression of a, an artistic expression, but it's also you kind of reaching out to people saying, Hey, look, if you need help, there's places to go, uh, that aren't like the places in your movie. Um, 12 set programs that don't cost a dime that help millions of people and you just need to reach out and, and get yourself out there and get yourself uh, clean and sober. I'm sure that's a big motivating factor for you in getting your movie out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the, I mean, that is the reason for getting the movie out there. Um, so for everyone listening out there, February 19 in digital on demand in theaters across the U S is body brokers. I recommend everyone watch this movie. It's a great cast, great film. And John Swab, I congratulations uh, to you, uh, in your journey. Congratulations to you on your film. Um, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see more of your work, man. And thank you for your time today. Matthew, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Have a great day.